Hello and welcome to a video on DNext, a new image editing application for the ZX Spectrum Next. Now I'll continue to talk in this high and low tone because out of the years of you watching YouTube videos, they always seem to be the most interesting. So what we'll do first of all is reset the ZX Next and the application is launched. Now DNext is an application just for simple image manipulation directly on the next. You could use it to draw your own images for instance or if you convert compatible book bitmaps you can import them. So at the bottom of the screen we have a familiar icon layout. Um, the first icon is a line drawing algorithm and DNext uses a anchor based system so that means that the right mouse button places the anchor for the line to draw from. Now DNX is absolutely mouse control only. Um, it doesn't support any keyboard functions um, so you really do need a mouse. I would certainly suggest one that has a wheel and a clicky button. Um, so if we wanted to draw a line here we could left click and we can see the line that's been drawn in purple and uh, a couple more lines. We can move the anchor point with the right mouse button and draw more lines over here. The next tool that we've got in our arsenal is the continuous line. Now the start point is uses the same anchor system so we press right mouse button to set the anchor position and then we can click the left to draw a continuous line shape. Now we can also use this to draw a more fluid action by holding the mouse button down. The next icon after that is the normal draw tool. Um, this does not join the last point to the ending point, so we, if you move too quick you will get a kind of stippled effect. It's currently 2 pixels by 2 pixels because I found that's most satisfying to draw with. After that, we also have a fill tool. Everybody will recognize what a fill tool will do. Um, this will possibly be a good time to introduce the palette, which if you move the cursor to the top of the screen, press the right mouse button, you will see a 256 color palette. Clicking the left mouse button will select the foreground color and the right mouse button will select a background color. So I will pick this shade of red and then I will fill in this particular gap here. Um, we could go and pick a blue color and I don't s oh, we, there we go. Oh, I knew it was going to do that anyway. So we can see the full screen being fortunately filled up there but that's not any trouble. Um, there's only 16k of stack available for the fill so if you fill a large area which is too large then you'll see this stippling. We can clear the screen easily using the next icon which is the clear screen and we get a prompt. Do we want to clear the screen? Left mouse button no, right mouse button yes. So we'll clear. So we'll back to a black screen. We'll just select a good colour from the palette again so we'll pick white. The next icon after that is a square or rectangle tool. We can draw a rectangle of any shape or size onto the screen. The next icon is a circle icon but I haven't yet implemented that because I'm not a big fan of circles. The icon after that is a load icon. If we click this we will see a load menu. We will be able to load a bitmap, an NXI format picture, a palette index order that's different than a palette, um, a range which works similar to how Deluxe Paint and Amiga ranges work and sprites but I've not yet coded so that won't do anything. On the save menu we have a similar options but for save. We have a magnify tool here where we can zoom into a particular area of the screen, make some adjustments and zoom out. We can also pan and scroll using the cursor keys on the keyboard. 
we click it magnify again to come out of magnify mode. Now let's load an image. We'll load an NXI because that's quite a convenient format. I've also tagged some data at the end of it to um, add some extra features from within DNext. So let me find an image that I've been working on which is going to be good for showing the cycle colors. So we'll load the ship. Now this has been drawn within DNext. It's a picture of a futuristic spaceship doing some sort of red laser zapper into a cloud of red stuff. Now if we click the palette cycle button here we will see that we've got the palette up top but we've also got a row of eight color blocks. Now this eight color blocks is used as a range and what that means is we can either draw and cycle through each color as we draw a line, a pixel, a box, a fill or we can do what the Amiga did which was to cycle the palette. So I'll press the right mouse button now to come out of the cycle edit mode and I'll click the cycle button here and we can see the effect there as the colors cycle through. We can go up to the palette and right click and we can see the colors that are involved with the particular cycle range. We can turn off the cycle by clicking cycle again and the colors have reverted back to their normal order. We can clear the screen again Let's, click, let's make the paper or the background black. We can use this cycle so it will cycle the foreground colour through this range here that we've created. Well, we've actually loaded it in. So, um, a good example here would be we can draw a little line, let go, another line, another line, another line, and so on and so forth. And each time we draw, or we release the mouse button more accurately, the colour is cycled through the palette index. So then we can cycle this and we can see it going around and around. So we'll turn off cycle for the moment and we'll turn off step through. Um, we'll load a, another NXI. This will be one that I prepared earlier. Um, so this is a conversion of the Mega Drive Sonic the Hedgehog 2 title screen and I've enabled the palette cycling so if we have a look at the palette we can see a range and another range so it's only a four, four colour cycle we will click cycle and we get the cycling effect that you would normally see on the Mega Drive title screen we can also um, slow down the speed of the cycle and we can also increase that with plus and minus keys on the keyboard so let's slow that down slightly um, we will let's load the next one which is the knuckles so again the way this was done is I loaded the static image in I zoomed into this area here where we see the um, color cycles. So we can see one, two, three, four, four different colors. The palette cycle was brought, brought up. The first one selected, second, third, and fourth, second, third, and fourth, until all the um, relevant colors or indexes were added to the cycle range. Once we do that, that's when we can click the cycle button and it works so there we go let's clear that as well um, we can also load in a palette index range which this isn't a palette you can load a normal palette by pressing F9 and then using the um, load palette option for layer 2 but what this will do um, this option will actually change the order of the palette at the top of the screen. Now I have output power 2 so let's have a, have a little look 
let's clear that screen. So now we can see the colors at the top of the screen are in a particular range. So we could very easily pick and draw a nice subsequent or pleasing range of colors. If we wanted to add them to the cycle, I mean, there's not really eight colors here for the cycle, but we'll see what we can come up with. Um, let's say the first color we want to cycle will be this cream. The second color will be this kind of salmony pink. The next will be that. Then this one. And move down through the colors till we reach the last one. Once we press right click and press cycle, we kind of get a funny step through. Possibly didn't include that one. Um, we can use the cycle option again to draw around. Again, the fill. <laughs> Obviously, didn't intend to do a full screen fill again. Must have had a gap within the um, shape itself. So let's see. We've still got the cycle option on. So as you can see, the colours are cycling through the index as we are drawing. Okay, and possibly the final option is quite cool, which is we've got a grab area, so we can select an area we wish to grab, and then we can repaste it onto the screen. Now, say we didn't want the cycle on, so that's the original colors. Let's clear that screen. Um, we can also add a mask to that by pressing I on the keyboard and now we can print in the color that we've selected. We can also use the mouse button to roll up and it will cycle through the color range. So I hope you'll find this has been rather useful introduction to DNext. Um, I'm hoping that people will find it useful for dabbling around drawing on the next directly. Um, I've spent a huge amount of time just playing around having fun. Um, just doing various bits and bobs. So do have a go. Um, offer your suggestions and improvements, bug reports to the usual place. Uh, thank you.